On today's World Insight with Tian Wei, we hear from the Deputy Prime Minister of Slovakia to see how the heart of Europe is open for trade and new ideas. And we speak to titans of business to see how they are setting their own sustainability targets. Welcome to a special program of World Insight coming from the site of CIIE, China International Import Expo. I'm Tian Wei. Slovakia is no stranger to China. Bilateral trade growth was at the world high of 46% last year, remaining as China's fourth largest trading partner in Central and Eastern Europe. Slovakia is one of the first European countries to sign Belt and Road Initiative as well. The Memorandum of Understanding certainly is the very first on the continent. With that in mind, I talked to Richard Rashi, who is the Slovak Deputy Prime Minister, about his country's CIE participation. Since he is in charge of digitization and informatization in his country, we also asked about technological cooperation between the two countries. You are in charge of the digitization information in your country. Tell me about how much do you see in terms of common ground when it comes to digital cooperation? So far, lack of international efforts yet. You know, digitalization and digital transformation is uh, our future and it's the future of our life. For example, we Slovakia, we are in the European Union and we have single digital market, so it means that we are not able to live alone and I think that also in, in the global framework we have to cooperate so even if you have any country which you want to separate or countries which want to build barriers it's just for a short time but you know time is important and time is precious time is very important and um, for example we started with a special pro project we called it the digital transformation of uh, our industry, because maybe you don't know, but Slovakia is the biggest producer of cars uh, per capita. We have only 5 million inhabitants, but we produce more than 1 million cars. And what is important, because of automation and uh, digitalization, we have more than 40% of our jobs at risk because of, of robots and new technologies. So that's why I said that we have to cooperate because we are not the only country with the problems because yeah. of digitalization and it's a problem for, for all world. And I guess your job is to really to negotiate, quote unquote, uh, about the potential of digitization with all of your other colleagues who are in charge of industry and trade, I guess. Yes. How does that work? <laughs> I think it works because uh, they also know that it's a problem mm. also for other countries, but not only in the European Union, but also in Asia and in America. So mm. As I said, we have some politicians who build barriers, but finally we will have to cooperate. Mm. The European Union churned out some of the basic technology standards, and those are some of the rare ones in the world yet. So how do you see this uh, EU effort? How much do you think, geographically speaking, how do you see those standards and the process of building the standards and whether those standards can be implemented in an economy like yours? Uh, I think that uh, in the level of digitalization and, and the new technologies, and I have to say that uh, we are still behind, the, for example, China. Mm -hmm. For us, uh, the China is on the top level of new technologies and high technologies. And uh, about the standards, I think that we, we have to know what is our goal, what is the goal of the European Union as all. Well. And uh, now we are just, as I said, it's a single digital market, so mm -hmm. we are creating standards for all European Union for 500 uh, million people. But uh, these standards will uh, will not uh, create any barriers. So we will, we will just we have to know where we want to go, and uh, we want to offer European Union countries as a one partner for other countries. Geopolitics, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister. Every one of us, after quite some time, really feel it now. Uh, 
one of it is about what kinds of technologies to be adopted by one economy or another, whether to use certain products, what is the priority in technological cooperation? So, so we have um, challenges like artificial intelligence, it's a big challenge for us, then uh, blockchain centers of excellence, second one, third very important is uh, 5G. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another very important are supercomputers. Yes. And the fifth one, autonomous vehicles. Mm. So we have these five goals. And uh, so that's why we need to prepare also very clear and simple regulatory framework. And uh, these five uh, topics are the biggest challenges for us. And. Uh, as I said, I also think that uh, it's an uh, open space for cooperation with other countries. Uh, how do you see that? I mean, in a way, security, of course, is very important for a country. But lagging behind in technology and taking advantage of the best is also going to be very significant in a way. So uh, how would you see the balance of these two? And how would you make sure your priorities about these two are being met once you need to cooperate with a business partner, whether it's from China or elsewhere in the world? So from my point of view, of course the future is a 5G. Yes. And as I said, the leader of the 5G is China definitely. And I want to point out that there is a different approach between the uh, European Union and, for example, the United States, because, as I said, we are open and we, as European Union countries and Slovakia too, will be open to cooperation in 5G technologies. Mm -hmm. There is uh, only one risk, and we have to be sure that it's a fair business and fair game, mm -hmm. is a privacy and a data protection. Yeah, it's, it's something that's about me. About you, about you, everybody, about industries, yeah. about our security and everything. But I think that European countries are very rational, so and they are very open. And uh, as you can see, some statements of um, the leaders of European countries. I mean, most of them are very open, and they said that they are open to cooperate uh, with China yeah. without any problems. And I am sure that this cooperation between China and European Union will continue. Slovakia included. Of, of course, of course. We have really no problem and uh, relation between Slovak Republic and, and Chinese company and mm. trade is very open without, really without any barriers. Mm. But of course the other challenge, uh, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, is how to bring update your population in terms of how to create talents, how to attract the best talents. You talk about automation and car making. That's certainly one of those areas would incorporate a lot of the five potentials you just talked about. And also how to make sure you can nurturing technology or technological cooperation hubs, uh, you know, uh, academic studies. All of these are so much related. So how do you see that once again? part of the EU, but also on your own as well. For example, we prepared special products, so one of them, or spe special projects. The one project is for our talented young people, so it means so we would like to prepare position for them or prepare all, all steps we need to use their talent and to, to show them the way where they want, to, where they can, could be successful, and uh, it means um, we cooperate together with academia, with business partners, and with uh, foreign partners. But from my point of view, the more, the most important is to prepare all population. It, it doesn't matter if you are yeah. kid or, or senior or elderly people, and uh, we prepare special product uh, project for improving digital skills. We established digital coalition. It means that our people, it doesn't matter where you work or how old are you, uh, will be ready for digital transformations. This time you are here at the CIE. It's about China, but it's not all about China. It's about a platform on which people trade and interact 
and also exchange of ideas and even culture in a way. So it's much more than just uh, let's buy things or let's sell things. Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, how do you see this trend in a way? I mean, this is probably one of those examples as to as we are moving ever closer, there needs to be very diversified ways of platforms and interactions. For, for me, the Expo in Shanghai is a really opportunity. Opportunity for everyone mm. and for everybody. And if I can say, we have, or you are leader of three big initiatives. So this Expo initiative is very special because it's import Expo. Yes. So it means that it's not about uh, I mean trade, import and export. It's about import export to Chinese market, which yes. is 1.4 billion people. Exactly. So it's, it's something special. It's unique, and thank you very much. It's a really I have to say that it's a really unique project. And uh, as I know, there is uh, more than 150 countries today in uh, Expo and so it means that you have possibility to create 150 international contacts. Mm. Uh, so it's a really good idea and I think it will uh, continue for many years. The second very important initiative is uh, Belt and uh, Road Initiative. It's also a platform which, is, uh, which was created by uh, People's Republic of China and it's about connectivity. And the third very important initiative is uh, 17 plus 1 initiative. Yes. So it's a very close cooperation. Uh, there's a China and on the other side or on the same level mm. we have 17 uh, European countries. Mm. But of course we also understand there are different opinions in a way. For example, China's interaction with the Central and Eastern European countries. Uh, whether, uh, how does that work in a bigger sense of the European Union? It's uh, also an interesting question, isn't it? Uh, you know, for you and for me and for everybody is important to improving uh, business and trade cooperation. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, this, uh, some European countries, uh, I mean some former Western European countries <laughs> or old European countries, they think that it's uh, something more because we live in a European Union market. But uh, I mean, everybody is responsible. I mean, all politicians are responsible for results and for deliveries for, for people. So, mm. and uh, we have 17 European countries uh, in this initiative. So it means that more countries is uh, for initiative than uh, against. I see. And from my point of view, that the future is. Uh, maybe about the increasing of number of countries. But you know, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, the world is complicated. As much as both sides, China and Slovakia, wants to work on the traditional friendship, there are new factors coming, could be coming into the relations, for example, geopolitics. As you may know, uh, China and the United States these days are in trade talks. Um, and people also are concerned about the decoupling at least in, sector, sect, in the tech sector in between these two countries and people wonder whether there will be overspilling effect to the other areas. Um, but U.S. is an important country, China is another important country. So this put a question to every other countries in the rest of the world as to what to do. So <laughs> what about a plan coming from Slovakia? It's uh, complicated, <laughs> but for us it's also a challenge because these uh, trade barriers are created also for uh, European Union countries. So, so it means that uh, we have yes. to be oriented more to other countries and other parts of the world. So, and now, uh, in, uh, in the past, the United States used to be the biggest trade partner of China. And uh, these days, it's, it's, not. Uh, it's, it's European Union. That's right. So as I said, if somebody decided to build the barriers, we have to think that it's a challenge for us and uh, we have to be oriented more to countries which are open. So we as Slovakia, we have open trade. China, as um, Mr. President said at the opening keynote speech, that the policy of China will be to be open to everybody. So I mean that 
thanks to uh, United States barriers, we can increase the trade between Europe mm. and between Slovakia and China. American multinational companies have had a huge presence at the ongoing second CIIE. I hosted a CEO roundtable. Let's hear what they have to say about China-U.S. trade and even technological cooperation. I'm Tian Wei, and welcome to the CEO Roundtable on the site of the second China International Import Expo. Happy to be joined here by Alexa Denbeck, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Technology and Sustainability Officer of DuPont. What a pleasure to see you here in Shanghai. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here today. Thank you so much for joining us. And Mr. Feng Huo, who is the Agilent Vice President. Welcome as well. Thank you. Thank you. You know, what is it? that you can tell people around the world about what you just experienced over the past few years, a few days rather, here at the second China International uh, Import Expo. I can't wait to tell people about the vibrant atmosphere, about the focus on collaboration, on innovation, and with President Xi's opening remarks yesterday on the need for sustainability. Mm. Really an exciting time. Innovation, cooperation, sustainability. That's the key word you got over there. Very important. What about for you, Mr. Hall? Yeah, I would like to talk about uh, CIE first. Uh, uh, everybody knows in the last couple of years, uh, everybody observed uh, economic globalization is a uh, little bit uh, slowing down. Mm. At this time, uh, you know, uh, Chinese government, uh, you know, announced uh, CIE since uh, last year. Uh, this year is uh, second year, which should be a, a very good sign of uh, China committed mm. to keep uh, opening up yeah. to outside world. Well, that's exactly the word the Chinese President Xi used at the very beginning of uh, the CIA at the opening ceremony, and also focusing on intellectual property to your company. I guess that is ex extremely important because you're focusing so much on sustainability and innovation. Dupont. It is, absolutely. So for DuPont, our mission is empower the world with the essential innovations to thrive. Mm -hmm. And all of that relies on partnership, relies on our ability to drive intellectual property, and to have co collaboration across our companies and I countries. I think notice you use the word uh, partnership, uh, because right now people say, oh, there's a threat, possibly not partnership, but rather decoupling. I'm not sure whether from a business uh, leader's perspective, how do you see that? Well, I think from a business leaders, we know that in order to innovate, we need points of view from all over the world. We need to have local customer needs in China. Yeah. We need to have local customer needs everywhere. So I think the spirit of partnership will prevail. What is the local customer's needs this time you have noticed? Well, I think there are some big themes that we're focusing on. Like what? Connectivity and mobility. Yes. Healthy living, urbanization and safety, mm -hmm. and environmental protection. And I think those needs are very real. They all require development. They all require innovation. Right. Ashland also is a technology company. Yes. Uh, uh, innovation is a DNA uh, of uh, Agent Technology. Every year we spend 8% uh, mm. of our uh, annual revenue uh, in uh, R&D. So we uh, basically, uh, our growth is all driven by uh, innovation yes. and uh, R&D as well. You just mentioned the IP as well. We are uh, sure we are concerned the IP protection very, very much. But the good news is uh, Chinese government is making a significant progress in IP protection. What do you mean for by everyone. progress? Uh, actually, uh, just... Is it because uh, you are sitting here in the studio no, of no, CCTN, no, 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 no. China Central TV, and that's no, why you say nice things? Yes. Just uh, in September 1st, uh, we had a press release uh, with uh, Chinese government the fair treatment. Mm -hmm. We just got... Uh, very good settlement of uh, IP protection case mm -hmm. in I China, think. you know, uh, so which make a company feel more comfortable and confident about uh, uh, China's policy uh, right. in uh, IP protection. I see. He has his own case studies to work on, but what about for your company? So how is that 
communication going on, let's just say, between business community and yours, for example? Well, it's very similarly, we're also interested in making sure we maintain intellectual property. One of the important ways that we do it is by building our innovation centers out. Mm -hmm. We have a major innovation center in Shanghai. Actually, we have a reopening of it, a bigger, broader center tomorrow. Through that, innovation comes from many places. Mm -hmm. It comes from market intimacy, understanding needs, mm -hmm. as well as IP. So I think that collection together is what helps us to make sure we can be successful in China. Well, what's likely to be the, you know, the near future situation when negotiation probably is still going on, when you have still elections going on in the United States? Will there be more China's innovation for the China market, a U.S. innovation for the U.S. market? How does that work? You know, typically our innovation is very global in yes, terms indeed. of technology development. But then we apply it locally to solutions that customers here need. Mm -hmm. So, for example, on connectivity and mobility, we're very involved in new materials development for 5G, which we know is important in the China market. Mm -hmm. So new materials developed globally, applied locally. Very important. 5G, almost like a sensitive word these days. Even though it is the ultimate technology probably we need to use in the future. How do you look at that? You know, companies that are involving in some kind of political uh, debate inside the United States, at least uh, coming from China. What do you say, uh, Alexa, about that situation? How are you tapping into the potential of 5G? You know, we focus on what we can control, and what we can control is our innovation pipeline into yes. new materials. What are the innovation pipeline? Help us to understand it. So, for example, um, in healthy living, our ability to deliver new probiotics, mm -hmm. new natural food ingredients, those are all market needs that we know exist in China. Mm -hmm. So all of our innovations are against what we can develop globally and then provide locally. What about 5G, since you mentioned about that? What oh, is that channel, as you just said? So for 5G, the important part there is to develop new materials to allow the end users to implement 5G. So we're all about materials development and the ability to do that everywhere. So you see huge potential market here in China about that. And as a result of it, all over the world. Around the world. I think it's a trend that's undeniable around the world. Everyone wants faster communications. Mm. I have three sons. They all want to download movies more quickly, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. Well, they promise with 5G it's going to be very quick. I think it will be. And, Let's see. And this year, in fact, they offer 5G service in this uh, CIE, the second the CIE, yes. right here on the site. Did you try it? We have it at our booth. Oh, great. Yes. That's wonderful. I need to visit your booth Please later. come by. We'd okay. love to have you. Please come by. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be fun. What about for you, uh, Mr. Hu? Uh, we are convinced that we will benefit very much from 5G, uh, you know, the technologies, uh, something because our target customers are all uh, an electrical labs customers, mm -hmm. life science, you know, labs customer, even uh, diagnostic labs customer. They need a 5G technology to connect them all together. Right. You know, customers need to connect their equipment, their lab and result right. from uh, anywhere any time and uh, what all of the data all together you know 5g technologies will join play a big role to improve uh, human conditions and the uh, human life you know, and, from and what we you want to benefit from that one you know i just don't understand how come the business people are saying what you have just said well some let's just say in the capitals are saying exactly the opposite. Uh, didn't they hear your voice? I mean, don't they know what the business needs? We, for sure, we uh, are crossing our figures to break those <laughs> uncertainties will not be lasting too long. Mm. And on the other side, uh, you know, uh, we believe there will always be uh, some uh, uncertainties from time to time, which are inevitable. Mm. You know, uh, as a business, uh, from a company perspective, uh, as a number one, we we'll always wish a market environment condition become better. Yeah. But on the other side, uh, we will continuously focus on our uh, innovation, yeah. focus on our innovation, uh, uh, operational efficiency to uh, hopefully we can pass through yeah. the uncertainties. And, and we believe our customers will have similar journey as well. Mm. How we can uh, help a customer to improve their efficiency and there's such kind of uncertainty. Mm. And meanwhile, aim 
on the bright future. Hey, well, that is our way. It seems like you're trying to suggest, <laughs> let's clean our house first to prepare for the better future. Is that what you're trying to say? Sure, yeah. sure. Should we be patient about what's going on right now? Or should we really speak up and try to interact so that we can overcome this hiccup or maybe a storm? We never know. Mr. Ho, what do you think? China is the second, the largest single country economy. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. Nobody can ignore China market. Mm -hmm. That's our takeaway. Right. Here's a testimony of that, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I, of course. Right of course. <laughs> Second fact is uh, even GDP, you know, uh, maybe uh, slowing down quite a bit. For example, five percent. I'm not going to make a projection of China economy, mm -hmm. but just say five percent. But if you look at a uh, look at around the world, yes. five percent is still outstanding GDP growth rate. Mm -hmm. right. If we consider second largest single country economy. Mm -hmm. If you look at the 2030, which is United Nations uh, SDGs, uh, uh, it's an aspiration. We all know that there is a huge gap between the realities and the goals. So from a company's perspective, what can you contribute to speed up this process, particularly at a time, as Mr. Ho mentioned, and everybody agree, mm. of uncertainty? We just launched our 2030 goals this week. So reducing CO2 emissions by 2030 by 30 percent mm -hmm. and being carbon neutral by 2050. Well, now the priority should be national security. How come you are still putting sustainability as the top priority? You are mixing things up. And maybe that's not the way to go. For DuPont, our priority is innovation to thrive. Mm -hmm. And innovation to thrive is absolutely critical for science and technology, and sustainability is part of it. So these things go together to deliver a company and a business strategy that's winning, mm -hmm. that solves customer problems, that creates value, not just for DuPont, but the whole point of sustainability is to solve big world scale problems. That is the real national security. It is. It? it comes down to zero hunger, clean water, mm. health and wellness. Right? Those are the real issues of sustainability, and that's where science and innovation matter. Mm. I like the fact that um, Alexa is trying to say, let's deal with, quote unquote, the real issues. Mr. Hall, for your business, the same? Yeah, pretty much similar. We share the same uh, philosophy with two companies. Uh, we focus on the uh, making contribution to environmental protection, food safety, and, and uh, high discovery of uh, new drugs, and also fight cancer, old stuff. You know, all about uh, improving uh, human conditions. Mm. So, uh, so that's, uh, we share the same one. That is uh, boundless, and uh, no boundary should be the worldwide. Regardless of people, they are, it should be trade equally well. Mm. That's so our mission. what exactly is the potential of the Chinese market? Of course, we see the Chinese want to incorporate the best from all over the world into their lives. So uh, to what extent do you see the real potential of Chinese consumers? Uh, as a business uh, leader, we also try to be realistic. You know, uh, China, <laughs> China has <laughs> enjoyed some faces we are high saying, speed. To be realistic. Yeah, <laughs> high speed. Okay. I, I, I'm a lucky guy <laughs> to got a, you know, a good experience in the last uh, many decades. Right. At least uh, three decades. Three well, we decades of high double-digit double growth. Okay. You know, that is... A, it is still okay, even uh, we down to the single digit, then come hopefully come back, even not come back, high single digit growth, still quite a positive growth. We don't need to be uh, pessimistic about right. that one. We right. should uh, come with one right. and live with one and hope for someday. Right can be back. Uh, well, at least the background music right here, <laughs> outside the booth, it's very upbeat. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to you, um, Alexa, about that too, what is the reality that we need to deal with? And how can we deliver to the customers what they need at exactly the right time that they need it? I think that's the art of business. And how do you think about that art? I think two things are critical. The first one is... It's like PowerPoint. Two things. Two things. That's <laughs> it. Just go ahead. Go ahead. I wish they were both easy. Go ahead. The first is high quality innovations based on what customers need. Mm -hmm. So really having the right insight to know what to develop, that's critical. Mm -hmm. 
The second one, though, is even more important, and it's what we've already discussed. Mm -hmm. The pace of change is so fast, yeah. innovation has to be able to keep in sync. Yeah. And for a materials innovation company like DuPont, we've got to speed up our innovation. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is through collaboration. I want to challenge one of the things you just mentioned, Alexa. For example, about the changes and uh, what you just said. It's interesting because it's very hard to think about technologies. They're changing so fast, and the nature of technology sometimes is unpredictable. For example, how could you, in the 1950s and 60s, the early rounds of AI, be able to think about what it is doing right now, right? It's almost impossible. So how would you be able to provide the customers at a time when all the technologies come together and bring them a ready product? That is the art, isn't it? It is. You know, in DuPont, what we talk about, the most important skill today is the ability to learn. Mm. How do we learn faster? Because you're right, we can't predict the future, no, you can't. but we can learn and pivot and drive changes much more quickly. How would you learn faster? Well, that's what we're excited about, is the way we learn faster is by relentless collaboration. Collaboration with academics, collaboration with other companies, collaboration with governments. Because together, everyone has a different viewpoint yes. on the perspective that it takes to win. Mm. So speed and learning go together, and I think they're ever more important. What are the things that you are learning from the Chinese academic circles? What are the things you are learning from the Chinese business people you are dealing with, from the Chinese government, things who are sitting here in China? Give us some examples. You know, I had great examples today at our booth, mm -hmm. and the examples all came in terms of a customer insight connected to speed. Mm -hmm. It takes new technology yeah. to be able to do that, mm -hmm. and we can have partners that can do it locally with speed. Mm -hmm. So the combination of the two is really powerful. Probably it's also similar, if not more, for your company. Yes, and, uh, and the market changing so fast, customer needs and even behavior change right. so fast. Maybe I can give you an example is, uh, you know, during the high speed, uh, high growth rate era, you know, people make uh, capital investment. investment, you know, very aggressively, but right now they're a little bit slowing down, may focus on more about organizational efficiency, lab efficiency right. as well. So they may need some uh, to buy some services from a company like uh, Agilent, but it used to be they they are doing everything by themselves, even the instrument repair. Mm. But right now, if you take like a younger generation, because they spend too much time on smartphone, <laughs> they don't want to do some uh, handmade stuff repair. They need uh, some pr more professional service providers like us to mm. do uh, you know things uh, and uh, more effectively help them right. improve their efficiency. That generate a new business, mm. new solution portfolio from us and, and, and also make the uh, whole industry yes. become more efficient as well. It seems that's what smart businesses are about, isn't it? You always find opportunities no matter what exactly the situation or reality you need to deal with. The other thing is about really encouraging innovation. That is a question I guess uh, a lot of people are asking and trying to answer on a daily basis. Whether it's for governments or businesses or academias, um, how does that work? What do you think will drive innovation? We talk so many areas of innovation, whether it's 5G, AI, just to say a few, and you have genes and other uh, science technologies. How do you think these would work together eventually? What is really driving the real innovation? For me, the most important ingredient in innovation is having a good problem to solve. Once we know what problem to solve, we can focus on that and then bring together all the capabilities that mm -hmm. it's going to take to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So focusing on growth that's based on really important and valuable problems to solve, customer problems, that's the key. And being able to know and understand what they are, like a wonderful example around laboratories driving productivity. Mm -hmm. For DuPont, it's around how are humans more healthful by taking probiotics for brain health, for digestive health. Yes. And then we can develop probiotics to be able to tackle those challenges. So focusing on problems that will have a big difference. Mm. And that's the connection also back to sustainability. Mm. The UN Sustainable Development Goals, it gives the roadmap. What are all the big problems that mm. the world needs to solve? So it's a wonderful combination. 
sustainability and innovation. Problem solving, that's the key for Alexa to find the real drive for innovation. What about for you, Mr. I would like to add, 100% agree with the, the comments. You must to have a diverse team. Mm -hmm. Diversity will make uh, a lot of uh, uh, creative ideas. Uh, maybe someone mm -hmm. will make a company or technology make a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you must have a diverse team and open for the different ideas, concept, and, uh, and uh, even sometimes uh, even the debate. You know, MNC uh, has a unique advantage in that area. We have a global diversity sure. in, in nationwide, uh, gl worldwide, you know, mm -hmm. people work together. So got a different perspective, I got mm -hmm. a quality brainstorming come up with idea right. and the discipline, the collaboration eventually will have to make uh, a true uh, innovation for whatever, you know. Uh, technology That's right. process business model. You know, we are here at the Shanghai International Import Expo, the second one this year. But people are wondering whether this is just an expo. You know, you buy things, you sell things, that was the original belief of what the interpretation of expo is. But now expo is more about platforms. It's about on this platform, let's think about things that we can do together. Let's exchange ideas and probably even culture. Let's buy things but also with the mind that maybe there's something more than what we just do right now. So Alexa, from your perspective, sustainability innovation, how do you see platforms like Expo, this one particularly, in terms of serving more than just simple buy and simple sell? I think platforms make these discussions strategic. Mm. And that's what we that. really want, uh. right? We don't want individual transactional solutions. What we want is to be strategic. And on the platforms, we can now map that back to what are the big problems we're trying to solve. Mm. The other thing that I like about this concept is it derives what I'll call uncommon partnerships. Interesting. I think to solve the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which President Xi referenced yesterday morning, to solve them, it requires a lot of different co companies, governments, agencies working together. Mm -hmm. So that's the uncommon partnership. It's really key. Mm -hmm. I do now agree with you both more, you know, because uh, we really trade uh, CIAE as a, a great platform from an agent perspective. Not only, you know, we got a business return through inside many contracts with our Chinese customer. And more importantly for us is uh, this platform provide uh, great opportunities yeah. for agents to, uh, uh, you know, to engage with our customers, thought leaders, mm. even government officials. Even today's uh, in-depth uh, dialogue on Discussion. the top media CGTN yeah. is a yeah. great opportunity to to help us develop market insight, a customer insight, and eventually, right. hopefully, uh, give us uh, more uh, inspiration. Well, uh, when you're in the right place, there are a lot of things that, and also miracles that could happen, right? Absolutely. Yep. As simple as that. Before we go, last question for every one of you. The negotiation is still going on. Drag it all the way back to reality. <laughs> Phase one or not, we don't know. From the business perspective, what do you mean? What do you look at the future is about? Alexa? For DuPont, the future is absolutely all about empowering the world with the essential innovations to thrive. Innovation is critical. We don't focus on the uncertainty. We focus on the certainty. And the certainty is innovation is required for economic growth. Mm. And that's what we're committed to. And we so appreciate being part of the CIIE. All right. Uh, number one, uh, uh, still very much appreciate, uh, you know, uh, Agreement possible, <laughs> even phase one. I guess the world is I, looking I, I at I really that. believe it yeah. is a uh, good news uh, for uh, China, for sure. Uh, for uh, edge in China, you know, 100 percent. You know, uh, uh, we don't know, and certainly will be gone or not. But so far, so good. It's better than uh, no agreement. That's my uh, strong belief. Second one is, you know, that is what we cannot control. Right. We are just control uh, our job. Make sure we are doing our job well, serving Chinese customer 
better than our competition and uh, and then uh, doing our business. Peng Ho from Ageland and Alexa Denbeck from DuPont. What a pleasure to see both of you here at the CIE. And that is all the time we have for this special program coming to you from the second CIIE. If you'd like to see more, try to find us, World Inside CGTN, in your search engine, YouTube channel as well. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook. From me, Tianwei, and our team here in Shanghai and back in Beijing, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time for more insights across China and around the world. Bye for now from the second CIIE.